everyone, it's Katrina. Number 10. The Oracle of the Dead Homer was a famous Greek writer whose fanciful tales still entertain us today. Homer's Odyssey is by far the greatest early travelogue ever written, describing the hero Odysseus's journey home after the Trojan War. It's an amazing book, not only because it was written 2,700 years ago, but also because you can track every step of the hero's journey. In the 10 years it takes him to return home, Odysseus makes a lot of stops throughout the Mediterranean. Each one of these stops can be pointed to on a real map, leaving many historians to wonder if Odysseus was a real person. One of the most interesting adventures Odysseus had during his travels was meeting the Oracle of the Dead, who sends him to a door to the underworld. According to the ancient text, Odysseus spoke with the Oracle on a hill at the meeting place of three rivers where a small ruin still stands today. And in 1958, Greek archaeologist Soterios Dagoras even uncovered the mysterious cave where Odysseus supposedly tried to enter the underworld. Amazingly, after further investigation, evidence of ancient cultic activity was found within the cave. This is an indicator that ancient Greeks believed the souls of the dead slipped into the underworld through fissures in subterranean caverns. Unfortunately though, we will likely never know if Odysseus was a real person, or how many of his adventures might be true. But discoveries like the spooky cave and its oracle temple seem to point to at least some parts of Homer's Odyssey being more reality than myth. And now for number 9, but first it's shout out time! I want to give a big thank you to Berenice Cernod for the super thanks! Thank you so much for your generous support! If you are new here, be sure to subscribe to join the Origins Explained family! We'd love to have you! Number 9. The Birth of Language There is a small possibility that all the people of the world once spoke the same language. You might be familiar with the biblical tale of the Tower of Babel. According to the Bible, human beings spoke the same language thousands of years ago. But when humans worked together to create a massive tower that would allow them to reach the heavens, God grew furious. And so, he destroyed the tower and fragmented the human language so that people would never be able to work together again. The biblical story is one of many that are almost identical. In Hinduism, there is a very similar myth. The tale is all about the birth of language and how at one point everyone could understand each other. There was a great tree that sprouted from the center of the earth and grew so big that it threatened to become as tall as the heavens themselves. The tree would allow all the humans to congregate underneath its canopy in peace and harmony. But when the Hindu god of creation Brahma found out about the tree's plans, he cut off its branches and scattered them across the globe. Wherever a branch fell, a new language was created. This doesn't prove anything. But it does seem suspicious that so many ancient religions believed everyone spoke the same language at one point in time. Right before, an omnipotent deity grew angry and destroyed everything humans had worked toward. Number 8. The Eye of Atlantis Would you believe that the lost city of Atlantis might be located in the middle of the Sahara Desert? Well, according to a lost Roman map and some shocking new theories, that might just be the case. The city of Atlantis, lost for an estimated 11,000 years, may be in ruins, covered by what is now known as the Eye of the Sahara. Also called the Rishat structure, the Eye of the Sahara is a mysterious geological phenomenon in Africa. From the sky, it looks like a symmetrical geological series of concentric circles, nothing but some ordinary exposed sedimentary rock. It was found for the first time by astronauts who saw it from space in the 1960s. First reactions were that the eye was made by an alien impact millions of years ago. Others believed it was a crater from a meteorite impact. But now people are saying that the structure could be the ancient ruins of Atlantis. The story of Atlantis dates back to 360 BC. That was when Plato, the legendary Greek philosopher, wrote of a civilization larger than Libya and Asia put together which was supposedly located right around North Africa. Plato described it as an island, a city made from rings of land and water. It was a majestic place straight out of a fairy tale. However, when the people of Atlantis became too full of themselves, 
Poseidon sank their city into the sea. The description of Atlantis fits perfectly with the physical structure of the eye of the Sahara. Artist recreations of Plato's Atlantis show a city of concentric circles overlapping the Reichat structure. There are even said to be a handful of ancient Roman maps that show Atlantis as being in North Africa, although these maps have since been lost to time. And even though no physical evidence has been found that a city once stood here, that doesn't mean the proof isn't buried under hundreds of feet of sand. But what do you think? Could the Eye of the Sahara really be the ancient location of Atlantis? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Number 7. The Giant's Ring Long before the civilization of the Inca, Peru may have been inhabited by living giants. These stories have been told for centuries, but modern archaeologists have had a very difficult time tracking down physical evidence of any giant humans. Just recently, engineer and expert on ancient history Celso Garcia Vargas went on an expedition in Peru. He was searching for traces of the lost civilization of Tiahuanaco. During his travels, he met an indigenous guide who told him about a mysterious tomb that was found in the area. The tomb was uncovered high up in the mountains and supposedly contained the body of a giant. The giant's skull had two horn-like structures sticking out of it. Because they were afraid, nobody wanted to bother the giant bones. But they did take an artifact from the grave. What they recovered was a ring. The ring is a very real and extraordinary artifact. Celso was even able to take photographs of it, which can easily be found online. It was huge, with an internal diameter of just over an inch. When scaling up to fit a person, the ring would have needed an owner that stood roughly eight feet tall. Whoever wore this ring was most definitely a giant. Unfortunately, the bones of the giant were never seen again, but the ring is still floating around somewhere. The discovery of one ring doesn't necessarily prove the existence of giants, so it's impossible to say for certain if the owner of the ring truly belonged to a group of giants, a race that has since gone extinct. For all we know, the owner of the ring suffered from some freak medical condition that made them huge. Or maybe it was just their fingers that were enormous. Who knows? Number 6. The Great Relief at Mamalapuram The Great Relief at Mamalapuram is a huge work of art made by the mysterious Pallava dynasty around the 3rd century AD in India. Its history goes back 1,200 years. And yet, scholars still remain uncertain about the subject matter of the relief today. Many believe it to be a visual representation of the descent of the Ganges, a story from Hindu tradition. The Pallava dynasty appeared in southern India in the 3rd century AD and ruled a huge part of the country. They had a habit of building massive religious monuments everywhere they went as a way of dominating the landscape. They commissioned monuments, built great ritual temples, and covered their realm in gorgeous works of art. Then, in the 9th century AD, the Pallavas were utterly wiped out by the Chola ruler Aditya I. The descent of the Ganges tells the story of how the gods allowed the river Ganges to descend from the heavens as a reward for King Bhagiratha. The water was said to be incredibly pure. In fact, it was so pure that it gave life to all the creatures who drank from it. But the river was too strong, and because of this, it threatened to destroy the earth. In response, Lord Shiva wrapped the flowing river up in his hair so that it would trickle down from his dark locks instead of pounding into the ground. This story is one of many Hindu epics, and most of the pieces are depicted here at the Great Relief at Mamalapuram. The Pallavas likely created the relief as a way to enforce their political strength in the region. It's believed that the rulers wanted to be connected symbolically to the Ganges as a way to remind their subjects of their divine power. A group of grooves carved into the relief make it look as though the whole thing once worked as an ancient water fountain. Water would have flowed through a basin to show the river Ganges pouring down from the heavens, where it then ran off Lord Shiva's head and continued throughout India. Number 5. The Phantom Ship of Warlocks the Kaleuche is a phantom vessel that's commanded by warlocks. At least that's according to the legends. 
The ship got its origins in the ancient mythologies of southern Chile. It supposedly been sailing along the interior canals of the country at blazing speeds. Even those who can't see it claim they feel its approach and see the shape of it cutting through the mist. The ship looks like an old Spanish galleon and is often accompanied by the sound of music. The earliest stories of the ship go back to Chilote mythology, stories told by the indigenous people of Chile. They claim that the phantom ship was created by the sea god Mialobo. Other legends say the vessel was built by the evil sorcerer Brufo Chilote, who uses the Caleuche to entice naive sailors. Once they are close enough, the ship abducts the sailors and forces them to man the vessel for the rest of eternity. But one of the more modern versions of the story is that the ship is used by a group of warlocks to make deals with wayward merchants for wealth and success. Locals even believed for a long time that when a sailor suddenly came into a significant amount of money, they'd made some type of deal with the warlocks controlling the Caleuche. When the Great Chilean Earthquake struck in 1960, causing massive destruction, those whose houses remained standing were called out for being in league with the warlocks. Number 4. The Stepped Stone Structure The Stepped Stone Structure is a mysterious ruin in the ancient city of Jerusalem. When standing there, staring at it, it very much resembles an ordinary staircase, but it also looks like a wall made of stairs. The entire thing is confusing, and nobody is sure what the original purpose of the ruin was. The stepped stone structure stands about 60 feet high and was built on terraces of stone and dirt. It likely wasn't a defensive wall because it could be easily climbed. The most probable explanation, though, is that it was used to protect the integrity of the ground from flooding. Because the city of David was built on sloping ground, floods were a huge issue. A particularly heavy rain could wash away entire neighborhoods. This structure may have been a way to make the ground more solid in order to prevent these devastating landslides. But the actual explanation for the stepped stone structure is still up for debate. It's located in the oldest part of Jerusalem and has been dated back to at least 1000 BC, which was roughly 3000 years ago. Archaeologist Elat Mazar recently completed an excavation of the structure. She suggests that it may have been part of a massive palace, the same one where King Joash from the Bible was assassinated in 796 BC. Number 3. The Resurrection Scientists believe two of the most important ancient mounds in Ireland may have functioned together as part of an important ritual 5,000 years ago. Even more shocking is that scientists say the ancient sites may have twins on the other side of the world in Peru. Newgrange and Nauth are two of the most impressive passage mounds in Europe, but scientists never realized the two were connected until just recently. Inside the Nauth Passage Mound, scientists have identified markings which trace the path of Venus on the equinoxes and the summer solstice. For the winter solstice, Venus's rising can be tracked through the nearby passages of Newgrange. Whatever was going on here, around 3000 BC, Newgrange and Nauth appear to have been designed specifically to track the rising of Venus in the sky. These mounds, according to experts, were almost certainly used as part of a resurrection ritual. Researchers believe the mounds were used in a resurrection ritual because Venus was a major part of similar rituals throughout the ancient world. Mystery schools from China, India, Polynesia, and Egypt all viewed Venus as a sign of resurrection. Venus was heavily associated with rebirth and new beginnings. And amazingly, there are a pair of ancient sites in the Andes Mountains that are almost identical to Newgrange and Nauth, which also seem to track the rise of Venus as part of some strange, long-lost resurrection rituals. Number 2. The Cairn of Barnanay The largest megalithic mausoleum in all of Europe can be found in Brittany, France. The stone cairn at Barnanay contains 11 passage graves and was built about 7,000 years ago. That also makes it one of the oldest megalithic structures on the planet. The most recent tombs were built around 4100 BC, meaning construction continued on the megalithic site for at least 900 years. But who made such an impressive structure and why? Unfortunately, scientists aren't entirely sure. The site was identified around the year 1850, 
and afterwards it was used as a quarry in the early 1900s. It wasn't until 1955 that quarrying stopped, and the site was seen as a place of historical importance. But by then, many of the stones had already been ruined or completely destroyed. Barnonay then became one of the first megalithic ruins to be carbon dated in France. We now know it was built during the Neolithic period, when farming communities had only just begun to emerge. Whoever built the monument did an impressive job. They were master builders who used stones to shape a truly massive mausoleum, and under the ground they carved tunnels and chambers for holding the remains of the dead. But because it's so old, scientists don't know who was buried here. The bodies are long gone, and so too are those who knew the secrets of the crypt. Number 1. The Atestupa The Atestupa, if real, was one of the most barbaric practices of the Old Norse people. The word itself is Swedish for clan precipice. It was allegedly practiced across Scandinavia during the days of the Vikings as a way to ensure that Viking communities didn't become overwhelmed with old and decrepit people. The ritual required elderly folk, when they reached a specific age, to fling themselves off a cliff. Historians believe it wasn't meant to be cruel, but a way to remove burdens from the family when a person became so old that they couldn't take care of themselves. But was this a real thing? And just how many other cultures practiced it? There are stories from the Inuit culture in which they would leave their elderly out in the ice to fall asleep and freeze to death. And in Japan, there are legends of elderly family members being abandoned in the mountains so that they didn't have to be taken care of anymore. It's really difficult in situations like these to see where history ends and fantasy begins. We know the term Atestupa first appeared in 17th century Icelandic sagas, but there isn't any physical proof that Vikings made old people jump off cliffs, and many historians think it's all just a myth. In reality, the truth is likely a lot less brutal. Vikings could have taken care of their elders, maybe even better than a lot of societies today. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time. Bye.